I've read over a hundred books on money and I'm gonna honestly rank seven books from best to worst. Every book that I talk about today, they were in my head, but I do not have this one because I hate to say this, but I threw it in the trash. Starting with Think, Think and Grow Rich for Women. Without question, Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich is very significant and it has impacted millions of people all around the world. But if you ever read that book, you may have noticed that Napoleon Hill wrote from a very masculine perspective and for the most part, he only interviewed men. Do I have anything against men? Obviously not. My father is a man and so is my husband. But we know for a fact that men think differently than women. And Sharon Lecter knew that. So she wrote Think and Grow Witch for women. And this is the women's version of Napoleon Hill's classic Think and Grow Rich. Sharon believes that women define success and wealth differently than men. She explains that women want to be wealthy, but not in the way men do. Women want to be wealthy and have money because of what they can do with money, like spending quality time with their children, making their family happy, having a loving home. These are the things women care about. Men, on the other hand, have other reasons for attaining wealth. Think and Grow Rich for Women provides insight into the 13 steps to success from the perspective and experiences of women who have crafted lives of accomplishment and significance. I love that this book not only mentions billionaire Oprah Winfrey, Sarah Blakely, Tori Burch, Mary Kay Ash, but also Mother Teresa, who dedicated her life to helping the sick and bringing hope to the poor. Mother Teresa's her riches was not all about money, but service to the world. And this book emphasizes that money is not enough and we should not just be satisfied with earning money. According to Sharon here, she quoted Mother Teresa saying, what is more important is our heart. And she relates a story when she was a little girl and her father would ask her every night, Sharon, have you made a difference in someone's life today? And that question I believe should be on all of our minds when we wake up first thing in the morning and when we go to bed as the last thing at night. Think and Grow Rich for Women questions the idea that women should feel guilty about balancing work and life. The work-life balance issue is just made up rubbish in my own words but according to Sharon Lecter this particular topic really gets under the skin of the author which I loved and it also gets my blood boiling too listen a woman cannot be still balancing just one thing to balance means to remain in one position and one survey done by stylist magazine found that 96% of women feel guilty at least once a day why it's because of the psychology psychologists who are bringing up the theories of life balance and this book gives women the knowledge needed to change their destiny and for this reason i give this book an a true wealth starts in the mind i know you've heard that before and many people resort to blaming their background society school and everything else for their lack of success in life but in breaking the habits of being yourself Dr. Joe Dispenza reassures that you are not doomed by your genes. He says that your genetic makeup does not condemn you. You're not permanently set to be a certain way throughout your entire life. This book talks about the relationship between neuroscience and quantum physics and personal transformation. It provides insights into breaking the negative habits, understanding the mind, body connection and there is such a connection which many people do miss and how that mind body connection can create positive change in our lives. Dr. Joe offers practical exercises and meditations that readers can use to implement the concepts he discusses so he doesn't just leave you hanging. It is very practical hands-on application. It explains how thoughts and emotions will impact your physical well-being and your life outcomes, even your money habits. What I really liked about this book is that the author says positive thinking by itself 
never works. You can't grow up as a negative person practicing negatively for decades of your life. And then all of a sudden you want to think positive and expect things to work. It does not work that way. Most people have a negative feelings deep within themselves. They think one way, but then their true being is the opposite. And according to Dr. Joe, when the mind and the body are in opposition, like they're in war against each other, yes, you're thinking positively, but in the back, there's a subconscious mind that does not think positively. And this book also includes real life stories and case studies of individuals who've successfully applied the principles outlined in the book. The author also even talks about his daughter and how she achieved success just by applying these principles. And this is relatable and inspirational which I liked. He also gave a story of one woman who always suffered from a lack, but then she decided to try restructuring her brain, her mindset. And when she did that, she bought a lottery ticket, which she never does. And then she ended up winning $53,000. And that was the exact amount she needed to pay off her loan. So the holistic approach in this book considers not only changing behaviors, but also transforming thought patterns the way we think while it may not be a traditional personal finance book the principles outlined here can directly impact personal finance in many ways and i believe that how you do one thing is how you do everything so it does not have to say money in the title for it to impact your money life so if we apply this to personal finance you can work on on transforming limiting beliefs about money wealth and success I also like the insights he provides into breaking negative habits. This can be particularly relevant for those with unhealthy financial habits. Dr. Dispenser, the book also emphasizes the power of visualization in creating desired outcomes. However, what I don't like about this book is the integration of scientific concepts that are complex. It can be very challenging to grasp. It really is difficult for those without a background in neuroscience or if you don't have a background in quantum physics, and I do not, so it was difficult for me to grasp some of the concepts. It also has spiritual elements that may not resonate with everyone. Like there's hypnosis, uh, things of that nature. The effectiveness of this book will depend on your openness to the concepts and your willingness to engage in the recommended exercises. And that's why I am ranking this book a C. Do you know what you want in life? Most people know for sure what they don't want. They don't want to be poor. They don't want to be miserable. They don't want to work at the job that they currently have. They don't want a nagging wife, etc. But when asked, what do you want? Most times we can't answer. Knowing what you want in life is the foundation for all success. And that is according to Dean Graziosi in his Millionaire Success Habits. Setting goals to achieve what you really want is an extremely, extremely important part of getting success. He stresses the importance of knowing exactly where you want to go in life and eliminating so many options. Sometimes we have too many options. This book talks about eliminating those options and he first asks the question, what do you love to do? And he calls this the magic list. So he says you are to write out a list and write everything that fires you up or that makes your heart sing. Once you write those things down, then you single out what you're good at and what would make you more money and many people believe that success is merely a result of luck but according to Dean he emphasizes that this belief is far from accurate success is not a matter of luck but rather it's about adopting the right mindset and taking deliberate actions to cultivate your prosperity these habits that Dean talks about serve as the distinguishing factors between average individuals and those who achieve true success. And the encouraging news is that anybody, just about anybody at all, can adopt these habits. He believes that anybody, as long as they adopt the mindset of the millionaire, 
can become a millionaire. So in essence, you need to identify your why as he calls it. That is the driving force behind your actions. So to uncover your true motivation or why you want to get what you want to get will require you to do some self analysis and deep reflection. Unfortunately, the author and his team have devised a technique known as seven levels deep. This method ideally should be done with a partner, but if you don't have anyone to do it with, you can do it by yourself. And it involves asking a series of why questions seven times. For example, you have a goal that you want to achieve. You want to ask yourself, well, why do I want to do this? And then you say, well, because I want the money. Then you ask again, why do I want the money? Because I want to be rich. Then you ask again, why do you want to be rich? And then on and on and on you go. And he says the seventh or eighth time is where you will find the real motivation for doing what you do. It's so important in revealing your underlying motivations. Now, what habits does he swear by? According to him, it's all about goal setting and taking consistent action. Also, what I like is that he's all about setting up systems for tracking your progress, staying organized, and reminding us to take time for rest and recharge. And here's the kicker, relationships and mentors are a big thing for him in this book. So this is a, a big key for millionaire success. One of the habits is to have the right relationship. Consider the author's journey with attention deficit disorder. He had an ADD past, or he claims to have suffered from ADD, and yet he could achieve so much because he chose to rewrite his story. He chose to tell himself otherwise. And because of those habits, I will rank this book a B. But then how do you do that? How do you unleash your true potential? How do you reach for more? If you've had a less than ideal past, a debtor rocket gives 12 lessons from her experiences in her book, No Regrets, Just Lessons. She talks about how she was able to become a financial success in spite of the cards not being in her favor, seemingly. Now, while this book is extensive, it is over 400 pages long there are a few good lessons to be learned from the author's life experiences but one must have a next level mindset in order to learn from these lessons odetta explains how to make peace with your past because you can't go back in time and change the beginning all we can do is decide to change the ending our minds are naturally conditioned to dwell in the past and our bodies know how to keep score of trauma done to us. But it does no good to stay in that place of pain. It makes no sense to stay in that place of regret. And when she finally let go of her painful past, she was able to embrace her powerful future. No, I'm not a huge fan of personal stories and all of that. That's just me. However, if you do, this book has a lot of stories that will keep your ears perked up and indeed for me. But what I love most are the real life lessons that she was able to bring out from all of those experiences. The inspiration and the frankness that are all wrapped up in this 400 plus pages. And that's why I'm ranking this book an A. So how can you close the gap between where you are today and where you want to be tomorrow? In his book, Unshakable, Tony Robbins explains how to do so. Unshakable is a comprehensive guide to achieving financial security and success. In this book, Tony Robbins emphasizes timeless principles for wealth building. The book addresses the psychological aspects of investing, providing insights. And this is one of the reasons why I liked the book at first. With Tony Robbins' signature motivational style, Unshakable not only offers practical steps for financial success, but it also encourages readers to adopt a mindset that withstands market volatility. The inclusion of insights from renowned financial experts, I thought, was really great, a great addition to the book. And remember, this book was written during a financial downturn, so the setting of the book is important. Now, overall, the book aims to empower readers 
to build a resilient financial foundation. So Tony Robbins looks beyond the now and he talks about how to build a lasting financial future. Back to closing the gap that I mentioned earlier, Tony speaks of the science of achievement, which talks about sowing the same seeds as successful people do for you to achieve what they have achieved. And if people learn that science, then they can achieve just about anything. According to Tony, there are three steps to achieving anything you want in life. The first step is to focus. He says that whatever you focus on, you give it energy to show up in your life. When you set your mind on something, hopefully something positive, your brain goes to work to ensure that that thing is activated in your life. And I remember years ago when I went to the car dealership in search of a new car. And I looked around until I saw this one car that I've never seen before. It was a Toyota Prius. And I thought, wow, I've never seen this car before, so let me get it. I've never heard of it before. And I ended up buying the car, but from that day, the day that I bought the car, it seemed like every other car that I came across at the red light on the street, just everywhere I went, lo and behold, I saw the same car. Toyota Prius and I was curious why now all of a sudden everyone is buying my car they're copying me but no come to find out the car was actually there all along I just never saw it until it was on my mind until I was focused on it that's when I begin to see it everywhere the next step according to Tony is to consistently take massive action it's not enough to think positive thoughts use other people who've done it before you as examples and modify what they are doing according to tony you have to do that in order to achieve success the third step in the science of achievement is to embrace grace and that includes knowing that no matter what you do if god doesn't put his hand in it if god doesn't have a part in it you could be wasting your time and what he talks about is acknowledging that the gifts and the abilities that you were given they were given you didn't drum it up you didn't create it the more you acknowledge grace according to tony the more grace you will receive now if you ask me this is the only part of the book that i found worthwhile where he addresses the psychology of wealth and nothing against the author i'm sure he's a nice man but in ranking books i always ask the question does the book cater to a specific demographic leaving others out i feel that this book was written to a very specific group of people and it left a lot of people out i feel it caters more to the experts investor and not the common person unshakable doesn't necessarily offer groundbreaking or unique financial advice either in my opinion if you're looking for more specific strategies you might find the content to be too aligned with traditional financial guidance the book heavily emphasizes investing in the stock market and that may not align with everyone's financial goals unshakable is also primarily centered around the u.s i mean which is quite obvious it also overlaps with previous works of tony robbins i find that he covers similar financial principles in his previous books and if you're not a finance major like i am and you are looking for something simpler i highly recommend the simple path to wealth by J.L. Collins. The lack of groundbreaking strategies in this book leaves it with a D rating in my opinion. So The Magic of Thinking Big contains timeless wisdom. Although the book was written a long time ago in the 50s, I believe, yet the advice here is very applicable to 2023 and beyond. Ever wondered why two children can grow up in the same household, raised by the same parents, eat the same food, but one of them becomes successful and the other doesn't? Why do some people seem to have everything they could ever want without putting in much effort at all, while others seem to be breaking their backs yet accomplishing nothing? You'll appreciate the insights from The Magic of Thinking Big. The key, as is revealed in this book, lies in understanding and harnessing the power of one's subconscious mind. I remember when I was a child and would see people drive by in their cars. Now in those days it was very rare to have your own vehicle. Only the very rich had a vehicle or drug dealers. It's true. So it was a custom to say things like, hmm, I wonder which bank this one really to get that car or hmm, drug dealer. That was our line of thought growing up. We thought that 
people who drove cars were thieves. And I'm not talking about nice, fancy cars, just cars. Guess what? Nice cars stayed away from us because of that mindset. Money is attracted to you or will stay away from you based on your thoughts about people who have money. Think about it. These are some of the lessons I grasp from this great, great classic book here. Now the book speaks about a disease called excusitis. This is another great part of the book. David Short explains that you need to go deep into your study of people. And when you study people, you'll discover unsuccessful people suffer a mind deadening thought disease. We call this disease excusitis. Every failure has this disease in its advanced form. And most average persons have at least a mild case of it. Then he talks about four things you can do to lick health excusitis. He gives you the recipe for how to deal with the health issue. Number one, he says, refuse to talk about your health. And that's what is great about this book. It is an all encompassing book. It talks about many different things. The more you talk about an ailment, even the common cold, the worse it seems to get. Success minded people defeat the natural tendency to talk about their bad health. And that is so true. The more you talk about sickness, oh, I'm sick. Oh, my head. Oh, I have a headache. Is the more you find you are getting sick. Number two, refuse to worry about your health. Because again, like number one, the more you worry about your health, the more your health will deteriorate. And that is exactly true. The third way to cure health excusitis, be genuinely grateful, great, <laughs> be genuinely grateful that your health is as good as it is. There's an old saying worth repeating often. I felt sorry for myself because I had ragged shoes until I met a man who had no feet. This is so true. I'm sure you've heard that saying. So true. He says that all he wants around him are people who can solve problems, who can think up ideas, people who can dream and then develop the dream into a practical application. An idea man can make money with me a fact man cannot. And then I really love this one. The ability to think is of much greater value than the ability to memorize facts. Thinking over memorization. And finally, this book gives a 30 day improvement guide, which I love, love. It is based on the principle that success only comes one step at a time. And that is why there is a 30 day improvement guide where he breaks down by days, the steps that we need to take. The book helps you to build a positive mindset and many readers will find this empowering. You will find it transformative as I did. It is a must read. I believe every high school student from high school on should read this book yearly because it is very motivational. It is encouraging. It teaches you step-by-step step actually how to think big. And this book is widely applicable. The principles in here, you can apply to different areas of life and you can also apply this to your financial life. And that is why this book is top on my shelf. I have multiple copies. And for these reasons, I am ranking this book as an S tier. Now, you know, I love a good book and I'm all for diverse perspective. But when I tell you that this book, it's like the author took morals and morality, literally throw them out the window. He trampled on them and then he went into his car, drove over morals and then sped off. This is what I feel about the 48 laws of power by Robert Greene. The 48 laws of power talks about how power works and the ways to get it and keep it. I call it the 48 laws of abuse and exploitation. The book uses stories from history, ideas, from philosophy, and it talks about things we know about how people think to explain its 48 rules. It helps people with understanding how people behave, which is great, but I feel it's grossly overrated. And as you notice, I had all the other books reviewed in my hand, but I do not have this one because I hate to say this, but I threw it in the trash. Yeah, I got rid of it. I think the author wants people to believe that this book has a lot to say. That's why it's so big, so hefty, when it is really a lot of fluff and a lot of danger in my opinion. My main squabble with this book is that it doesn't emphasize doing the right 
thing. Someone even labeled it the treasure map to hell. Trying to enjoy this book was like attempting to appreciate a painting in total darkness. It, it just didn't make sense. I couldn't. In reading this book, I found myself swimming against the current of the author's ideas, desperately trying to find solid ground. The author doesn't seem to care much about what's right or wrong. He seems more interested in gaining and keeping power. I have spoken extensively about the dangers of this book in a previous video, which I recommend if you want to hear about some of the laws. But today I'll only mention a few laws here that are incredibly infuriating to me. Robert uses manipulative tactics and strategies which are ethically questionable or even socially harmful. For example, in law seven, he says to get others to do the work for you and take all the credit. Yes, I do believe in outsourcing. You can outsource tasks to other people and you can have them help you, but deliberately taking the credit for someone else's work, isn't that plagiarism? Another issue I have there with this book is the lack of moral guidance. He does not provide a moral compass and that leaves the readers, at least it did me, with a skewed perspective on power and influence. For example, in law 14, he says to pose as a friend, but work as a spy. Really? On the flip side, it is suggested to approach others with caution and to view them skeptically. He says to treat people as potential threats. And while that is understandable, because really you can't trust everyone. The idea that I get from him in, when he talks about this law is that he's telling you to employ deception and spread misinformation about people in order to maintain an advantage over them. This is a great strategy if you're in the army. Yes, but this strategy is not conducive to building lasting, meaningful relationships. The 48 laws of power paints a cynical view of human relations which I do not like about this book. One of my concerns is that the book's principles could be misused by people who are seeking power for malicious purposes. And there are these people. For example, in law number 30, Green says to make your accomplishments seem effortless. He says that if you make your accomplishments look like you didn't do anything hard, then you can generate awe in others and you can look more powerful when you do that. And he knows that. So he's telling us, to capitalize on people's ignorance. But interestingly, it's so much easier to just be truthful. And I feel that this book skips over that altogether. If you put the advice from this book into action, I believe you might just find yourself friendless, lonely, having no fulfillment in life. Remember what goes around comes around. And that's what I keep thinking when I read this book. It's gonna come back around if I do this. And that's why I am rating this book with a grade of F. If you've read any of these books or have any recommendations of books that I should read, let me know in the comments below and be sure to check out this video on the eight books you should never read.